Hello guys and welcome back to another one of my videos. On today's video we're gonna do a geometric shape which is just a cylinder but the importance of it is that it's the closest surface that will reflect similar as a car so I think it's gonna give you a lot of uh, hints on how to start rendering a car so it looks a lot more realistic and shiny. So check it out. So today's video is going to be about how cylinders reflect the light off them and how to make them shiny and matte. So similar to last week's video, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's about cubes and how they can have different surfaces that do different, uh, that they control in a different way, how the light bounces on and off of them. So today with the cylinder, we're going to see how light bounces onto the bottom surface of it and how the light affects the top surface of it because like cylinder has surfaces that are facing up middle and down so you can see the horizon you can see the sky you can see the ground and like i said before this is very similar on how cars look and how they work and all the reflections so this is going to be very helpful for the next step of rendering cars today i'm going to be working on uh with red markers last week we did gray markers uh, this week we're going to work with red markers so it's a little more exciting color for a car or something that you want to do a toy What's up guys, so in the last video we talked about how the reflections worked on a cube, now we're going to do this video with cylinders. Today I'm going to actually render in red just to do a video of showing you how to pick up all the reflections and stuff that happen on the different materials but also on the different shapes which is very important. So last time I used this was very successful was this an acrylic that I made a cylinder out of. So by having the cylinder I can see the horizon line, I can see the ground line, I can see the reflection from the sky and and all that gets picked up and you can even see like the sun set setting right there. So with this one I'm going to show you how to make something shiny, something matte. By having something shiny like say it, it will show your surroundings. If you look closely you can probably see where my camera is in front of you guys. It's very highly reflective and it's actually bouncing the light to give you detail of what's happening around it. Now if I grab a different object like a, another cylinder that is like more of a matte material. So I got this cylinder now which you see it's perfectly matte so it's actually not reflecting it's it's absorbing the light because it's kind of like porous so if you look up close you can see that it's actually it has a core it has like the light bouncing all the same things that affect the the shiny cylinder but with this cylinder you can see that you do not see what's happening around it it's just absorbing the light and it's not reflecting it clear enough where you can actually see what's happening around it this is just a matte cylinder this is like semi gloss it's actually not a cylinder but it's the same shape this is the kind of shapes that you will encounter on cars so if you see I can see the horizon line I can see the sunset setting but I actually don't see a little circle perfectly drawn like I did on the red cylinder of the sunset that actually gives me a general idea of its surrounding but it's distorting the light enough that it doesn't give you a clear image of what's around it but the same principles you have your horizon line you have your sky you have your bounce light and I'll explain a lot better in my studio what the bounce light means and how it affects cylinders and shapes and my last one it's um, this is a, a metal cylinder I didn't have chrome but what this does is you can see that it picks up a lot more color to it so if you can see it has like the blue tones on the sky on the top it has the warm tones coming from the ground but it also has that reflection that horizon line the reason it doesn't show exactly what's in front of us is because this is brushed aluminum so the brush part of it is what's making the light distorted enough where it's consistent this way but it's not showing you the image of what's bouncing off it this will be a great materials on drawing wheels and rims and uh, just to show interiors all the metal parts so but you can see how cool this the um, the light it's affecting so let's get to the paper and get sketching so one of the simplest shapes we can work on would be a cylinder and the cool thing about a cylinder like I explained before it has a surface that is facing up, a surface that is facing towards you towards the horizon and a surface that is facing down. So if you see if I was to put a pink paper here and I was to put this you will see the shadows and all that stuff but you will also see the light bouncing from my pink paper you will see it how it bounces up right back into the cylinder so it's going to pick up some of that pink tone even though the, the cylinder is white and this is a pretty matte surface is going to have that light bounce back into it so that's what happens with the concrete on the car when the, the sunlight hits the concrete it bounces right back up into the bottom of the car that's why a lot of my sketches have like a very warm tone to the bottom of it so today we're going to work on 
maybe four cylinders. If we have an ellipse, it has to be at an angle. And then we have our lines going into perspective. And then we have our other ellipse to close that cylinder. And then we have the shadow, which will be an ellipse kind of like that. And then it closes right here. Okay, so this is pretty light. At first, keep it light until it's right. Like I said, this is gonna be simple cylinders. The first one's gonna be matte. The second one is gonna be like plastic, semi-glossy. The third one is gonna be glossy. And the fourth one is gonna be like almost chromey, like super shiny, but all with the red paint. Especially at the beginning when you're learning how to sketch, I build my sketches slow. What do I mean by building them slow? I, since with markers, you can't go back once you go with a darker tone, you cannot make it lighter. I always start with my lightest marker and then I keep building that until I get to the tone that I want. But it's very important that you build it slowly. And if you go and start with a super dark red and then you want to make it pinkish, it's not going to happen. So make sure that you start with your light tones and then get darker as you go. With my red markers, this is a, I use the ad markers and I already know my colors almost by heart. So my lightest pink is the sunset pink. Sunset pink, that's my lightest color that I use. Then I go to powder pink, which is, it has a little more red tone to it. From the powder pink, I jump to salmon. From salmon, I go to deep salmon. So deep salmon. And if you notice so far, none of them are red. They are all pink. And what is, it's a red when the light hits it and it's kind of bright, it's a pink, it's not a red. And then, only until I start going from the deep salmon, it starts to turn a little reddish, but it's still on the pink side. And then once I jump into, I, could, I have two reds. I used um, Scarlet Red or Life Red, which are my two deepest reds. So this will be like pretty much if I'm drawing a red card, this will be like the heart and soul of the red paint to it. So anything after that will be for shadows and I'll go darker like with the burgundies and anything before that will be pinks. So right now I'm gonna build it slowly for you guys so you understand what I mean. So I'm gonna start with my sunset pink and I'm gonna draw my cylinder. So my light is coming again. All my light on, on all this cylinder is gonna come from the top side, from this side, right? So if I have this side, then that means that my darkest side of the cylinder will be actually the flat part of it, the back side of it. If we're looking at it this way and the light is coming from this side, then this is gonna be my darkest part of it because it's the part that is facing away. And we're gonna have, you can see it right there, we're gonna have a core. So that's the core, that's, that's the part where this is the light hitting it, this is the light bouncing, and this is like the darkest part of the cylinder where both of those lights kinda don't have the strongest effect on the cylinder. So we're gonna replicate that by, like I said, the backside is gonna be my darkest. And this is going to be my first one, which will be... Will be a matte cylinder. So by being a matte cylinder, it means that the changes of tone and light are not going to be as strong as on a shiny cylinder. So I already worked on my, um, on my backside where the light is not hitting because it's coming from this way. Then I'm going to do my core. That's the darkest part of the cylinder right here. And then this, this will be kind of like what would represent the sky and it will get lighter and lighter as it, as it goes to the, to the horizon line pretty much. Right, so you see, not much change of tone. It's hard to read how it's like a 3D object. I'm gonna make this rounder. But once, um, once I start adding a lot more tone to it, it's gonna turn red. So not right now it's pink, and like I say, I'm building it slowly. So from my powder pink, from my sunset pink, I'm gonna go into my powder pink. The powder pink is gonna make it look a little redder, but it's still gonna be pink. So this is my matte cylinder again. So I don't want a big change of tones to it. So I'm gonna work on my core, obviously the back side. And the beauty about this marker is that they leave so much ink that I'm not afraid to soak it. You can see how the paper is wet. I'm not afraid to soak it because that's how I'm gonna get the best even distribution of color where you cannot see all the marker strokes. And then I'm gonna work on my sky. You see how I control 
I control the amount of pigment that I leave by controlling the speed of my hand. If the faster I go, the less pigment is gonna leave on the paper. So now it's starting to look a little 3D to it, but it's still pretty pink and I want it to be red. I want it to be matte red. So like I said, if I was drawing this by myself and I'm on a rush, I would probably go, I would have started with like deeper reds, not pinks, because I know what color I want to get, but that comes from experience and drawing a lot of cars. But if you want to learn, I would build it slowly because sometimes when you're learning, you don't know if it's too red or it's not red enough yet. So it's easier to actually see the steps until you get where you want to be. Now with experience, then you know where you want to be, you where you want to go, so you can go straight there. But when you're starting, it's better to start it off slow. So now I use my sunset pink, powder pink. Now we're gonna go with the salmon. Salmon is like a little stronger pink. Again, I'm gonna work on the back side of the cylinder. And what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna start building more tone to the top part of the backside than to the bottom so I have some of that light bouncing off and it will create a better 3D effect. Now I'm gonna work on my core and I have some light bouncing from the bottom of the cylinder and then I'm gonna work on my sky. And when the transition is it's a little too strong, I can always go back to my previous marker, the powder pink, and drag some of that ink down to get a better, like, smoother transition on it. So now from the salmon, I'm gonna go to the deep salmon. I'm gonna do my core. I'm gonna do the back side of it. And I'm gonna do my sky. And then since the transition is a little too strong and this is a, a matte cylinder, I'm gonna go again with my previous marker, which in this case was the salmon. And I'm gonna smoothen out some of that transition. And then I'm gonna go to my bread which I, in this case I'm gonna use Life Red, Scarlet Red, they both have a, I, I believe the the Life Red is a little more like to the orange side, a little brighter. The, the Scarlet Red is a little deeper red, so it gets a little darker. If I'm drawing a darker red Ferrari or a car, I'll go with the Scarlet. I'm gonna work again the back side of it. And I'm gonna work my core. And then I'm going to work my sky. Again, I'm going to jump back maybe to the salmon and drag some of that tone down to make a smoother transition. And then if I want to create a better 3D effect, so it shows that this surface and this surface are facing a different way because right now they almost look like it's one whole surface, then I can go with my my burgundy colors, which are a lot darker, to try to differ to separate that back side from the front side. And I'm gonna drag some of that color. And then I could go ahead with my um, warm tones and just create a shadow behind it. And I'm using my warm tones and I'm going stronger and stronger. So I start with the one, then the three, then the five. Seven, which again, I explained that before, but now I go to my 
warm uh, to my cool seven because at that point from the warm seven and the cool seven you cannot tell too much of the difference so that just saves me time on markers and money and then I could go ahead and highlight a little bit of the front edge to show that there's an edge in there and I'm gonna use my French curve just to get a, a better line to it. Right, and just like that, we have a matte cylinder. So you see the change of color, the transition of color from here to here, it's kind of smooth. It's a, I left a little bit of a core rate right there where it's right above the horizon, it's a little shinier, but you can still read this as a very matte cylinder. And if I want to make it even matter, I can start killing. That core to make it like absolutely matte. So if this was rubber, I can actually make it darker and darker. I'll probably darken that towards the end of the video so you can see the difference. So now I'm going to work on a cylinder, which would be a semi gloss, like a, maybe like a plastic to it. So maybe same material as my marker. So maybe same material as a marker, which is kind of shiny, but uh, not super glossy. So for that, again, I would draw my cylinder. You know what? I don't like that cylinder because it's facing too much towards me. So let's lay it down a little more. So I'm gonna go like that, and like that, like that, like that, and then add the shadow to it. And that's it. Okay, so now I have my second cylinder. And I'm gonna work on same principle as before. We're gonna start with my lighter color. I'm gonna build my core, my bounce light, and my sky. Right, so notice how I left white right now, right above the horizon, because that's what's gonna make the huge difference in indicating that this is a little shinier than the previous one, which there's no white above the horizon. Now I'm gonna grab my, my um, powder pink, which is a darker shade of pink than the sunset. And again, now I left a little bit of the previous marker under there to create that uh, gradation of like the sky tones that always have like a more smooth transition uh, down. And I have a video about that if you want to check it out. Then I'm going to go to my salmon. And look how I'm working right to the edge of the horizon. So I want my horizon to be the darkest part of it. Then I'm gonna go deep salmon. Look, I left a huge fingerprint there. And I'm gonna kill a tiny bit of the white just to make it a little less shiny. Like I said, the, the shinier it is, the the, bright, the brighter that core is gonna be, that, uh, that contrast of color is gonna be a lot stronger. Salmon, I'm gonna go deep salmon. Again, right to the edge of the horizon. Backside and the top of my sky tone. And then I'm gonna go back with the salmon and smoothen out some of that tone, some of that color. And 
then I'm gonna go with my Life Red, which is actually, like if, like I said, this will be the actual color of the car. Like the closest that you get to the horizon, that's the, probably the most, uh, that it represents the actual color of the car. Work on the back side. And then I'm gonna drive some of that color down. And then next week I'll make a video about why I don't color the entire backside just one tone and actually play with the tones on it. I'll make a video about it. And then I can go with the ruby red. Just darken it just a tiny bit. And again, I'm gonna go super quick with my shadow. And then I can go with my, by blowing it so it doesn't mess with my, with my ruler and, and drag all the color to it. So I have that shiny edge on it. And basically you can tell there's a big difference of how shiny this is against this. This is matte, this is shiny, and it's just a cylinder. Uh, I could clean up a lot of the top edges for for it. But doing a demo like this, I want to make it quick so I don't bore you guys and I need to add more light because I'm out of battery. Give me one second. Okay, so that was my matte cylinder and my semi-gloss cylinder. Now let's go with, uh, would be probably uh, the car paint, would be something like So car paint will be a lot higher contrast, but again, I'm gonna build it super slow. So we're gonna start with the sunset pink. So now I'm gonna protect a lot more the light that is bouncing from the bottom of the cylinder. So I'm gonna make sure that I leave enough of a light color in the bottom so I can see a lot more light bouncing from the ground as before it was a little bit because it was like a not super shiny material but when this is gets super shiny then it starts reflecting in its, its environment. So it's very important that you leave all the surfaces that are facing down actually will reflect whatever is underneath them. I'm gonna start adding random reflections, kind of like I did with the cubes, because random reflections, it's what makes something start to get like super shiny. Because when something super shiny reflects its environment, and sometimes we under, do not understand what is reflecting, but we see that it's reflecting stuff on her brain immediately just says oh that's shiny even though it doesn't know why something is reading a shiny but uh, that's how your brain notices I guess so salmon again random reflections and I curve them and I'll do a video about why I curve them but um, for some reason which I'll explain later reflections like to curve a lot I'm going 
into the deep salmon. And the other thing that I'm working on right now, it's I'm gonna have a shadow here. So I'm actually gonna reflect that shadow into the back of my cylinder. And you'll see how that, once I add that, um, that shadow is gonna make your brain read it as how it's actually light that is bouncing off from the backside to the front, from the backside into the surface of the cylinder. Now notice how on the top I don't play as much with the curves and zones because usually the sky is pretty even and clean unless there's clouds and stuff, but usually it's like a perfect radiation of blue. So you want your sky surfaces, your surfaces that are facing up to be a lot more smoother than the surfaces that are facing down to have like dirty reflections on the ground, be curve, uh, road lines, whatever is on the floor. So now we're going, was that deep salmon already? And now I'm gonna use my actual red. Which be life red. go back with my sunset pink and create a smoother transition right here because the smoother the top transition is the more um the shinier is going to look and it's going to look like the thing was um waxed and polished and it's really controlling how the light reflects on it a lot better and i'm going to go the my burgundy red usually on the last cylinder i only used it on the back side to kind of like break apart the top side from the the back side from the rest of the cylinder. On this one, I'm actually also gonna use it here on the shadow and I'm gonna actually use it on the core of the cylinder. And by using it just like the edge of the core is gonna bump that contrast of my lightest light against my darkest dark. And that's what is gonna make this thing pick up the shininess a lot because you want contrast. The more contrast you have, the shinier your cylinder is gonna look and then I'm gonna add my shadow to it And you have to notice how this reflection is a continuation of the shadow because it's it's kind of like it's reflecting the shadow on the body of the of the of the cylinder and that's what's going to make that effect of shininess to it here is would be wash and wash what it is it's, it's like a toothpaste it's like a paint that I haven't even cleaned my brush but I can actually add highlights on top of the marker and that's kind of like where the Sun would reflect actually on the cylinder and it will make it that much shinier so now, if you notice the difference from this one to this one, I punched up a little bit of the contrast. I picked up the light from the bottom and the, the, also the back of the, of the cylinder is a lot shinier. And then last will be our chrome cylinder, which I had drawn a cylinder here, which I didn't like, but it doesn't matter, I can draw on top of it. Notice how I draw through my shapes, it doesn't matter because that's how I get that roundness of the front and the back of the cylinder. 
So it, that I'll explain in a different video, but it's important to draw through your shapes. So this is my final one, which would be a super chromey, shiny red. So with this one, it's actually the light that is bouncing has a little tone to it, like earth tone, kind of like car. So this will be kind of like a chromey car, which actually will pick up. Instead of starting with the red, I'm actually starting with the ground tone because it's actually picking that up from the ground. And that's what's gonna make it a lot shinier and chromier because it's also starting to represent the colors that are coming from the ground. That's my core, got my sky. I'm gonna leave a lot more white this time because it's a lot shinier. So it leaves a, a shinier horizon. And then I'm gonna draw the backside of it. Powder pink. Notice how I move a lot faster when I'm on the top, just because that creates a way better radiation and leaves less pigment. So it's important to work it a lot faster when you're on the top. Salmon. Again, I'm gonna protect my, um, I'm gonna reflect that shadow but I'm actually have a, I'm gonna have a lot more contrast on the back side of the cylinder. Random reflections, red. I'm gonna go deep salmon. I'm gonna go back a tone with the, my previous tone just to make sure that uh, my gradation is a lot smoother the way that I want it. So, so that was the salmon, I'm going deep salmon. I changed the angle of my shadow against my horizon because I didn't want that line to continue and be confusing on if the cylinders keep going or that's the backside of it. So sometimes you just have to, even if it's not following the rules of the drawing and it's not perfectly accurate, for me it's better to describe and make the user understand better which is the backside and the front side that if that accidentally aligned and uh, it's kind of confusing where the backside of the cylinder is and where the front side of the cylinder is. Life red, again my random reflections. And now again, I'm gonna darken the core of the drawing, the core right, right below my horizon. That's where I want it to be the darkest. So my darkest could be against my widest. This is kind of similar as the previous cylinder. But what's gonna change now is uh, I'm gonna punch the contrast of this one like crazy. How do I do that? First, I'm gonna smoothen out my, my tones a little bit. You see, I, I leave random reflections. I don't care if it's a little messy or dirty because that's what's making it look shiny. I'm gonna make sure that my transition on the sky is a lot smoother because right now you can see a lot of the change of markers. So I'm gonna smoothen that out. And the way I do it is I just build like the darker colors and then I drag them down with my lighter tones. And now to make it super chromey, I'm actually gonna leave the reds, even though I was using the reds, and I'm gonna go with my grays. I'll start with my number five. And I'll start darkening the core a lot more. So you can work grays over red. 
and it will just give you a way deeper tone of red. And then as soon as I'm done doing this, I'm actually gonna clean my marker. I always do like the edge because actually if I start a different drawing, different uh, tone, and I grab my red marker, uh, my gray marker is still gonna have a little bit of red pigment. So make sure you clean it so you don't get your marker ready, uh, dirty. So I went from the five to the seven. Yes, I'm gonna put black on a red marker because that's what's gonna make it look ridiculously chromey. And then what I would do is uh, grab my pencil and straighten up that line that is super crooked so it shows that it's like a super clean reflection. So let me go like that. And you see how my line is deeper and um, my black line, it's a lot thicker and then it kind of thins out. Having those like dynamic transitions where everything's not perfectly smooth makes things look a lot more chromey. And then a lot of the edges on chrome for some reason like to bend up and down at the edges. So if you try that, Gonna look a lot chromier. And then sometimes when you reflect the color, it doesn't make that much sense until you actually put the color that is reflecting on the ground, and then it's easier for the user to understand why there's that color bouncing on the surface. Because if this was grass, then I'll be bouncing green light into the into the body of the cylinder. If this is um, if this is more like an earth tone, then I bounce that earth tone to it. Again, I can go with my white pencil, just highlight low in it so it's dry. Highlight where my edges are. And these are kind of like quick examples. I usually work a lot cleaner than this, but if I take my time, this this is an exercise that actually takes a lot longer to draw, but I want you guys to see it quick, so I'm making a little dirtier job than usual, but it gets a point across. And then just to end this, let's say I have my name right here. cylinder will pick it up up play down right here that. and notice how I I did it on the lighter tone just to show that it's like shiny, reflective and stuff like that. But uh, if it was like chrome, perfectly chrome, it would be exactly the same tone pretty much. I can darken it a little bit as it's closer to you and then go darker again towards the end. But, but that's just to show that it, it's a very reflective material. And 
and that's it. I hope this helps. I hope, I hope this gives you a very good understanding on how to control on a painted car and different materials. So this will be able to help you represent like chrome and body paint and I'll work on some uh, actual just metal shiny uh, silver chrome which is very common in a lot of cars and a lot of products. But um, just little by little you start to practice and understand this and as boring as it is to do cylinders and tubes and stuff this is the foundation so then when you start doing cars nothing seems too complicated because you understand what you're working on so thank you for watching please subscribe if you haven't done so i do a lot of tutorials on how to do car sketches and i'll see you guys next week with another awesome tutorial take care bye